it, it's ingenious, and blockchain is important, but Bitcoin has no unique value at all. It doesn't produce anything. You can stare at it all day, and no little bitcoins come out or anything like that. It's it's it is a it's it's a it's a delusion basically. <laughs> So before you start leaving hate comments below saying Warren Buffett's just getting old, one thing I'd like you to do is to have an open mind and because let's face it, Warren Buffett is one of the most brilliant minds and investors of our time. And even though I love crypto, even though I love, I've invested in Bitcoin as well as all of the other altcoins, the one thing that I'm always very open to is what are people on the other side of the equation talking about what are their main points why because this allows you to stay grounded because not everything is going to go to the moon right so listen to his points because when you do that you'll be able to understand what are other people's fears and frustrations uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency so let's listen to the rest of the arguments and why one of the most brilliant investors of our time just pretty much hates Bitcoin so much. In terms of cryptocurrencies, generally, uh, I can say almost with certainty that, that they will come to a bad ending. Now, when it happens or how or anything else, I don't know. People think they're going to make money the next day. And worse yet, if they think somebody else that they know is going to make money and they aren't going to make money, it, 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 it just draws people in. You know, I, I, I can whisper something on this program and, and and kind of the more silly it was the more it might react because there's no quantitative limits if you buy a stock you say well i'll buy it 15 times earnings but i won't buy it 20 times earnings. but when you get into something that doesn't produce anything there, there's no there's no checkpoints here there's, there's nothing to reference it to it's just it's gone up so at one point this weekend you said that Bitcoin, and this was basically, you were asked, Charlie said Bitcoin's like rat poison. You were asked about that comment and you said, well, it's probably more like uh, rat poison squared. Uh, Charlie went on in the meeting to then basically call Bitcoin turds. Um, he, he is an expressive sort, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when he gets a little older, he'll, he'll mature. <laughs> I just want to ask you about that because it sparks so much controversy and uh, particularly on Twitter and some of the places where you might expect people who are trading in, in cryptocurrency uh, to be pretty um, loud yeah. about what they what, what is it about Bitcoin that gets you guys so fired up? Well, when you buy a farm, uh, you look at the crop every year and, and what prices are and you decide whether it was a satisfactory investment. I mean, you, you look to the asset itself and what it produces for you. When we buy a business, we look at what the business earns and decide how we feel about it in terms of what we paid. But we are buying something that at the end of the period, we not only have what we bought in the first place, but we have something that the asset produced. And when you buy non-productive assets, uh, all you're counting on is whether the next person is going to pay you more because they're even more excited about another next person coming along. But the asset itself is creating nothing. Uh, one of the interesting things, uh, for example, is, is gold. Uh, if you go back to the time of Christ and you look at how many hours of labor you had to give up in order to buy an ounce of gold and you take it forward to now, you'll, you'll find the compound right maybe a tenth or two tenths of one percent. You know, and, and, and then you have to insure it during that time and make sure you know, somebody doesn't steal it from you. And everything. But it doesn't produce anything. And uh, productive assets, uh, you, may, you can pay too much for a productive asset, but I bought a farm in the 1980s and, and every year, look at how much it produced the way I sold beans and corn. And at the end of that period, I've still got the farm and I've gotten some significant income off of it, apartment house, operating business. But uh, if, if you and I buy various cryptocurrencies, they're not, they're not going to multiply. They're not going to be a bunch of rabbits sitting there in front of us. They're just going to sit there. And I got to hope next time you get more excited after I bought it from you, and then maybe I'll get more excited and buy it from you. And actually, we could, we could sit in the house by ourselves, and we could 
keep running up the price between the two of us. But at the end of the time, there's one Bitcoin sitting there, and now we've got to find somebody else. And they, and they come to an end. Buying something because you expect the pool of people who want to buy it because they want to sell it to somebody else will grow. And, and, and you know, it, it's wonderful because it does create a rising price does create more buyers and people think I've got to get in on this and and it's better if they don't understand it that's the other thing about not if you don't understand it you get much more excited than if you understand it people they like to speculate they like to gamble and uh, if you can get something particularly if you have something half plausible going on mm -hmm. if you had bought gold in 1942 and you say we might lose the war we might have to run off to some other country and you know so let's put our assets in gold you would have less than a penny for every dollar you got from owning stocks. Less than a penny. Now, somebody calls that a store of value. I mean, I think they're delusionary. In terms of cryptocurrencies, generally, uh, I can say almost with certainty that, that they will come to a bad ending. Now, <laughs> when it happens or how or anything else, I don't know. But I know this, if I could buy long-term put on every one of the cryptocurrencies, I'd be glad to do it, but I would never short a dime's worth. Have because, you thought about you know, trading the futures talking, to take a negative position on Bitcoin? No. You would not do that? No. There's no, re there, there's no reason. I, I get into enough trouble with things I think I know something about. Why in the world should I take a long or short position in something I don't know anything about? So, uh, you know, we don't have to know what cocoa beans are going to do or, 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 any, or cryptocurrencies. We just have to focus on eight or ten stocks that businesses basically that we think are decent businesses uh, but I do think that uh, I, I think what's going on definitely will come to a bad ending anytime you buy a non-productive asset uh, you are counting on somebody else later on to buy a non-productive asset because they think they can sell it to somebody for more money and it's been tried with tulips and it's been tried it's been tried with various things over time and it does come to a bad ending I'm having you have a hard time. You can you can think of think of raw land. I mean, the Louisiana purchase was say fifteen million dollars for eight hundred thousand or so square miles of land. In fact, you're sitting on land that came with the square mile, and you're down to three cents of, or something. So that was a pretty good purchase. Of an, what was then a non-productive property, but it depend. But it's very hard. You can buy st stamps. Bill Gross got every you know collected a wonderful stamp collection and it sold for more money in the end but it's dependent on somebody else wanting to buy hoping they will sell it for more money and so on and in the end you make your money out of productive assets if you buy a farm you you try to estimate what the crops what amount per acre of soybeans or corn or whatever may be raised and how much you have to pay the farmer that farms it for you and what your taxes will be and various things. And you make a conclusion based on what the asset itself will produce over time. And that's an investment. When you buy something because you're hoping tomorrow morning you're going to wake up you know, and the price will be higher, the only reason, you, know, you need more people coming into it than they're leaving. And, and they... Uh, and you can get that and it will feed on itself for a while and sometimes for a long while and sometimes to extraordinary numbers. But in the end, but they come to bad endings and cryptocurrencies will come to bad endings. And it, along with the fact that there's nothing being produced in the way of value from the asset, that, that uh, you also have the problem that it draws in a lot of charlatans and that sort of thing who are trying to create various sorts of exchanges or whatever it may be. It, you know, it, it's something where where people who are of less than stellar character see an opportunity to uh, clip people who are trying to get rich because their neighbor's getting rich buying this stuff and neither one of them understands. It will come to a bad ending. I mean, it's too bad, but but Bitcoin, it, it's ingenious and shade is important, but Bitcoin has no unique value at all. It doesn't produce anything. You can stare at it all day and no little Bitcoins come out or anything like that. It's, it's, it is a, it's, it's a, it's a delusion, basically. <laughs> so we've gone from rat poison square to a delusion. Well, it's kind of an upgrade. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Who knows where we'll be next year. But I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry it happens because people get their hopes up that something like that is going to change their lives. And it's a very ingenious thing to 
figure out how to have a limited supply and make it harder to, more expensive to create them as you go along and all that sort of thing. But it doesn't, the function, is, and, and this is explained to me by people a lot smarter than I am, but they say blockchain does not depend. I'm betting on and JP Morgan is talking about creating their own, you know, JPM and, and it'll, it'll be worth a dollar. I mean, it's matched to the dollar to dollar and uh, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to people that want to. People react uh, when you criticize their investment. If they get mad, <clears throat> they're gambling. You know, if somebody criticizes <laughs> Apple or Berkshire, we like it. I mean, if the stock goes down, we'll buy more of it. I, uh, because uh, it's, it's, we don't care whether, it, it, it's just, we don't feel that it has anything to do with it. Uh, but if we criticize something that they own because they only want it to go up tomorrow, uh, they feel we are hurting them, and therefore they get very upset about it. If they really like what they own, what difference would it make? You know, you know. In, in the end, I, I may start a war on currency. You know, maybe I can create one, and I'll say there's only going to be 21 million of them, and you can have a little ledger sheet from me and everything that says you have it, and and you can have it after I die. And you, but you can't do anything with it except sell it to somebody else. And the interesting thing, of course, is that. Bitcoin's been out there a long time, and people talked about how it would be used in, in various kinds of exchange. But none of our companies are doing business in, in Bitcoin or anything. Yeah, uh, Bitcoin has been used, I think, to move around a fair amount of money illegally. So the, the, the people- Maybe in countries the, where you have- Yeah, so the, 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 the logical move from the introduction of Bitcoin is to go short suitcases, because the money that was taking them suitcases from one country to another. Suitcases will probably fall off in demand. I mean, so you can look at that as the economic contribution of, of Bitcoin to the society as a